Hi everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Maybe you're joining me live. Maybe you're on the replay. Um, regardless, please check in. Start um, writing in the comments. You can just slide it to the side and then you can um, you can say hi. And uh, also please comment along. Please tell me what you like and um, we can you know go from there and start the conversation. I'm so glad that you're joining me. Um, this is a little bit of a different time. <laughs> I'm actually in a different spot here. Um, I'm actually in my mom's basement because I need childcare for my two kids right now. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, you'll have to bear with me because, of course, I've had to transport all of this and, um, you know, lights and stands and rigs and we're working with different internet and we've got kids upstairs that might be making noise um so we're just gonna go with the flow tonight okay so i want to thank you guys for being there for me uh over this last week this week has been a month <laughs> one of those right um but i want to thank you guys so much you are just a wonderful support network and it means so much to me that um that we can connect still through this wonderful device here, through the internet. So I'm going to take you through some promotions and some things that you need to know in the beginning here. And then um, from there, we're gonna start crafting, okay? So while people are joining, I'm going to transition you here to our amazing sale. This sale is blowing my mind because it's my favorite sale. You get at least $10 off any order that you place over $65. So how shipping works with Stampin' Up, it's always a $9.95 minimum charge. So if you order $65 worth of stuff, they would charge you $9.95. And um, then beyond that, it's 10%. So this deal is 10% or at least 10% off. And it's tomorrow only, okay? So mark your calendars. It's for St. Patrick's Day. And I'm feeling lucky. I hope you feel lucky too, and that you can cash in on some of these savings. So some of the things that you know you might want to get. Um, this is a great time to, of course, um, stock up on papers, adhesives. Um, you know, you always need another pack of dimensionals, right? So be sure that you um, get select some of those to go into your cart. But I also think like the big ticket items, right? <laughs> the things that maybe you've had on your list for a while, like how about, you know, you save like $14 off getting the Big Boss or, you know, about $10 for the minimum shipping off the Baby Boss, right? So think about all of that. Also think about um, prepaid paper pumpkin subscriptions. So that's going to be a savings as well. So even though they ship out over the coming months, you pay the shipping up front. So if you order it tomorrow, then you get shipping, free shipping every month that you're getting a kit, right? Okay, I'm putting the bug in your brain. And now you're going to start thinking about all the wonderful things that you could get. Uh, I want to talk about prepaid subscriptions too, because they count towards club. So if you're interested in Paper Pumpkin, which is our monthly subscription kit, then you will want to definitely get a prepaid subscription and then you can actually get these cards for free as well as getting you know a kit that you're going to make a whole bunch more projects so it's a really good deal so I'm going to keep reminding you about this free shipping tomorrow I'm going to send out an email I'm going to do some posts on Facebook but please 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 take advantage of this because the shipping then goes straight to your door you don't have to wait for anything it just arrives to your door fantastic right Okay, um, I also have another special on right now, and it's the Bird Ballad Trinkets, and this is my free gift with a $100 purchase this month, so I always do a gift with a $100 purchase. During celebration, I do it for a $120 purchase because um, that coincides with celebration, and it just makes sense in everyone's head. So this month, we're back to our $100 purchase, and let me show you these cute trinkets. Yeah, just get my lighting right. Okay, so here we go. You can see these adorable trinkets actually have a lot of texture to them. Can you guys see that? They're kind of pewter colored or like antiqued colored, but I just think that they're so beautiful. You can see also um, that some of them have holes in them. 
So you can thread them onto twine or you can, you know, a little very fine ribbon you could um, put them onto. Um, but I really like that some of these ones here don't. And of course, any of the ones that do, you could always just have it kind of coming out from behind a piece of paper and then there you go. You've got a totally different look, right? It doesn't look like it's missing some twine or something like that. But we've got beautiful flowers and then the little ribbon bow here, um, a key and then a little branch. So it's kind of covers everything. Um, Masculine, feminine, everything. If you're just tuning in now, please say hi. I would love to, I always check everything afterwards. So um, I'd love to see who is joining live. I'd love to see who's on the replay. So if you're watching on the replay, then you just hit hashtag replay. And then that's what you're going to put into the comments. And if you're looking for the comments, just swipe to the side on your phone or I think on the computer, it just shows up along the bottom. And then likewise, if the comments are getting in the way later on, then you can just swipe to the side and um, move those out of the way. Okay, um, now talking about butterfly bouquet, this is amazing. So it says on here, exclusive and early release products for you. And so I want to make sure that you understand this. I did a whole video going through every product as well. So you probably wanna check that out, but We've got a whole bunch of new beautiful supplies to play with and we're going to actually make um, a card with these this month too. So there are two parts to this, well, well I guess three. Um, there's the Butterfly Brilliance Bundle and this one here comes with a stamp set and that's just one stamp. It's huge. It's the size of a card front. So those butterflies are really nice and big. And then there's the outlines that cut those out. You can see those are the solid ones that are gray there. And that is one solid die as well. So you can stamp it once and then you can use the die to cut it out once and you don't have to worry about aligning every single... <coughs> oh, I forgot my water. <coughs> Excuse me, tickle in my throat. Um. So you don't have to worry about aligning it every time. Oh my goodness, I made it worse. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This is like your dreaded moment on <laughs> live on the internet, right? Um, then you've got these detailed overlays, which you can use on their own, or of course they perfectly overlay those solid pick, um, cutouts that you can do. Along the bottom underneath those, butterflies, you can see there's some other dies as well. So two little butterflies, some splotches, and some bricks. And then there's one that's really hard to see. It doesn't cut out anything and it just impresses on the paper. And that's right underneath that bottom solid butterfly on the left. Oh my goodness, I might have to call up for SOS. I need water. <laughs> All right, let's scroll down here a little bit. And then you can see the other part of this sale. So there's the Butterfly Bijou 6x6 Designer Series Paper Pack. Now, um, I should mention that the, the whole point of this promotion is to explain this to you. So the stamp set and the framelits are an early release. They are going to be available in our next annual catalog, which starts in May, May 4th. But right now you can order it before you know the catalog starts. Now there's something else special that's going on. <coughs> oh man. I'm looking at my reinker bottles. I'm almost that desperate for some water. <laughs> Don't drink the reinker. Okay, the Butterfly Bijou 6x6 Designer Series paper. This is available only while supplies last until May 3rd. So the other ones are going to be available after May 3rd. This one here and the Natural Touch Specialty Paper are only available while supplies last until May 3rd, okay? So it's, you know, quite likely that these could sell out. So the Natural Touch Paper is a birch color and there's a texture on there too. And um, it comes 12 inches by 12 inches. It's really nice. It actually looks just like some of the like airplane model wood that we've had on some of our projects in the past. But I love that it's such light texture and it doesn't crack. You can send it through your big boss or your mini boss, your cut and emboss machines. 
which are that's pictured below here actually and um, and it works so well it's really beautiful plus you can color it and make it all its own so if this is really catching your eye you want to make sure that you are ordering the Butterfly Brilliance Collection. So this is one item number that covers the stamps, the dies, and both papers. And instead of just bundling and saving and getting 10% off of the stamps and the dies like we normally do, this Butterfly Brilliance Collection actually gives you 10% off the papers too. So add that in with free shipping and yeah, you're doing a happy dance, right? So $97, that puts you $3 away from getting those trinkets that I just showed you. That's the $100 gift. So just add a little something on there. And um, even from the clearance rack, get up over that $100. I'd be happy to mail you or give you some of those Bird Ballad trinkets for pickup from my place. And then they just have put on here the stamp and cut and emboss machine because it's really important to use that when you have dies, of course. <laughs> All right, let's go over here. This is our next promotion, and I want to remind you again that you can get Paper Pumpkin prepaid subscriptions on um, and have it count towards Club and have it count towards that free shipping that's happening tomorrow on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. This is a little preview. So the picture on the left there is showing those popsicles. That's our preview for what's coming next month. So this is the sign up time right now where you can purchase a prepaid code or sign up and get um, the, sh the kit shipped directly to your house. So this is an all inclusive paper crafting kit and you can see there's like some strawberries and um, watermelons and kiwis on there that are stamped. So that's giving you a little hint at what the stamp set is going to look like that's included. But let me tell you what it's about. The So Cool Paper Pumpkin Kit is a little taste of summer fun with enough supplies to make 12 colorful shaped cards with coordinating envelopes. Six card bases are popsicle shaped. The other six are semicircles, three watermelons and three rainbows. All of the cards are splashed with cheerful, vivid watercolor images. The kit also includes two full-size matching sticker sheets, die cut accents, fun embellishments, and more. Now, if you had a chance and you watched the teaser video, then you will actually see that um, they've really geared this kit towards kids. Now, don't let that deter you. <laughs> Are we all not just big kids? Don't we all love ice cream and popsicles, right? So please don't let that deter you. I think what they're trying to do is to, um, to inspire connections that maybe you weren't thinking about before, right? About sharing the kits uh, with, you know, that some of the younger people in your life or even buying them for um, presents for people, right? So the picture on the right there is not what's included in the paper pumpkin kit. This is our ice cream corner suite from our mini catalog that's available right now. You can buy all these items separately, but I wanted to show you that this paper pumpkin kit that's coming up is actually made to coordinate with that. So you're talking like coordinating colors and popsicles and the same kind of theme. So I just love that. And I know there are so, so many of you who have actually fallen in love with that suite. When I did a poll, I think um, that was most people's favorite suite this, this time here from this catalog, I should say. Okay, so, you know, um, we're talking about, about paper pumpkin and what, you know, do we do for prepaid subscriptions. I want to show you where you can find that information. You can, of course, look on my website, um, stampingwithkelly.stampinup.net. Um, you can go to my Facebook page. I think you're there right now because you're watching this video on there. But you can also find it in your catalog. So on the last page here, we can do a month to month subscription and that works out to $30 a month. Now that's great. I, I wouldn't discourage you from doing that, but I would encourage you to look down here at the prepaid subscriptions and um, think about the way that I run clubs. So with a minimum $35 order, you get these cards for free. Now, if you wanted this upcoming kit, that's so cool kit, then what I would recommend doing is getting a one, three, six, or 12 month subscription. The more months you get, the more you save. But um, you don't have to commit to all the months um, doing them consecutively. If you see a preview and you're 
not super keen on the look that month, then you can actually <clears throat> skip it or I encourage you to get it and there's always a money back guarantee. So if you're not happy, you just contact Stampin' Up and they make it right for you. So amazing, right? So the one month kit starts at $28 and that um, is really, really close to that $35 where you're going to get your club cards for free. So that still is not going to give you free shipping though. So you might want to add some items onto that. Or you might want to bump up and do three months subscription. And again, you can pause this or skip months at any point. I just love these kits. And um, of course, if you want to get a kit or maybe it doesn't appeal to you, you can always use that as a gift for someone too. It makes a really great gift to brighten someone's day. Okay, let's talk about catalogs because there's some weird stuff coming up here. It's going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. <coughs> that frog is still bugging me in my in my throat um I think I I just um we had a delicious dinner tonight and I'm like I have some spices from our roast beef <laughs> that are you know tickling my throat all right we've got our annual catalog and you guys are not going to remember these dates but I'm going to show you where to find this information okay so on the back side in this little box you're going to see it is until May 3rd 2021 okay so this catalog is actually ending first before our mini catalog. So we haven't really had this happen before. So the retiring list is going to come out next month when our new annual catalog is available for view by demonstrators and, um, and pre-order too, I think, right about then. And, um, and so it's going to be a little bit interesting because we're going to know what's retiring from our mini catalog. Although this one is saying it's still active until June 30th. So that's kind of interesting. So we'll navigate this together and I'll keep you in the loop about what we're doing here. But when we get up to this time of year, I always try to direct people on the things that are most urgent. So in the back half of the catalog here, so starting on page 141, these are all of our accessories, papers, dyes, punches, everything that comes from overseas usually and um, is only available while supplies last. So it is kind of likely that some of these will sell out before the end of the selling the sales period. Okay, so don't just think that it's guaranteed at that date. This time of year, everything is while supplies last. So if you have something on your list that's in the back half of the catalog here, page 141 and beyond, then make sure you get that first, okay? That's your priority. Then, you know, later on, you can buy the stamp sets that go along with the, th the items. Um, if they're bundled, you wanna bundle and save, right? But, um, if you're just looking at a standalone stamp set, just know that those are manufactured in Kanab, Utah, and they are basically manufactured to order. So we don't have to worry about those really selling out. So the mini catalog, of course, if you take a look at the back, you can get an understanding of what kind of things are going to sell out first. So we're not going to be concerned about the stamp set so much again you want to bundle and save whenever you can save 10 percent but any of those specialty papers um or designer series papers specialty items and papers any of the dies punches ribbons accessories anything like that could retire before um, and be sold out before the end of this catalog okay clear as mud Clear as mine. All right, let's talk paper pumpkin because we were talking about it already. And I wanted to show you, this is not this month's kit because I'm not at my house. I don't have this month's kit yet. It might've been delivered today, but I didn't, I didn't have time to go over there this afternoon. So anyways, let me show you last month's kit because we're gonna be using this for our first two cards here tonight. And these cards are available if you uh, picked up your cards or paid extra for them to be mailed out. So this kit here is called Bouquet of Hope. It makes three different card designs and you make a total of nine. So you get three of each of them. So they've got these beautiful gold elements. I was making this while I was uh, um, ice fishing with my family. Shh, I wasn't really fishing, 
but neither was my family because we've got these trigger rods and so you know they pop up if they get a nibble on them but guess what we haven't had a nibble all year so it's okay I felt confident that I was not going to be needed for any fishing assistance and I was making cards instead <laughs> so this one here is my favorite because of course the color I just love it it's so pretty you've got those fun little uh, black rhinestones included in the kit and there's only two things that you stamp in this kit here sorry for your loss and I'll always be here for you this is a sticker that you put on and I didn't assemble all of them because I wanted to show you this fun vellum foil so you can see vellum is kind of trans oh we talk about this every month and I overthink it transparent yeah and you can see through it depending on how close you go here. But I love this vellum because the back side of it turns silver. You get two in one. So if you're more of a silver kind of person, or you maybe want to make some silver, some gold, you just turn it over and there you go. You've got a totally different look. Fun, right? And um, our stamp set that's included in this, let me show you that. Okay, we've got this beautiful bouquet. And again, these are actually the only ones that they say that you use on the outside. There's a nice saying for the inside, but this bouquet is really beautiful as well. So if you wanted to purchase these kits, they've already shipped from Stampin' Up! to me, but I have them for cash and carry. You can choose to get a full kit, which includes the stamp set and the ink spot. The ink color is Mossy Meadow. Um, or you can choose to get a refill kit, which is just going to give you the consumable supplies for these cards. And maybe you have two sayings that would fit perfectly on there. Now, if you're not already a member of the Paper Pumpkin Fan Club on Facebook, it's a fantastic group. And um, it gives you all kinds of inspiration. That's why I love this kit so much. And I ordered a whole bunch of refills, you know, to give to you guys, to sell to you guys, or... Um, also to make for myself because every design that people are posting for alternates is amazing so gorgeous for this kit there's so many fun things that you can do with it so I encourage you to join that group it's going to give you fun inspiration whether or not you have paper pumpkin coming to your house that's you know no problem at all design inspiration is so fun regardless so I really love these kits $15 for the refill that includes only the supplies for the nine cards the consumable supplies or you can do the $30 kit, which includes the ink spot and also that beautiful stamp set. So um, I have to say, okay, you know I'm a crazy fan of Paper Pumpkin, but this card here is not really to my design taste. It's just, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Some things appeal to certain people and some things don't. The doily seemed like it was just a bit much to me. So I wanted to challenge myself and reimagine this to a way, to a card that I um, was hoping that would inspire you as well. So I made a card and then I was like, wait a second, we can use that doily for another card. So then that's why you've got two cards for when you pick up this month. So let me show you the first one that we're gonna make. So these ones, if you've received your kit from me and um, you have your kits mailed out over Canada. I offer free mailing all over Canada, which um, is just a way of, you know, me getting the stuff to you for free, not charging you anything. But my thank you for my members who pick up from my house is that I give them, instead of spending the money on the postage, right, then they get extra cards, usually one, um, that they can uh, make that showcase a little bit more. I don't want to spend my money on postage. I want to spend my money on, uh, you know, getting you something in your hand that you're going to fall in love with. So this is the initial one that I made here. So happy Easter, happy spring, happy, happy everything. And we're actually using that doily as a mask. And I did um, some sponge daubers with this. And um, I even included the halo around just to give even more texture. So I'm going to show you a few different options. Now this one here I actually made with um, shimmer paint, the blender brush, and some re-inker that I mixed up. So I'm going to do something like that to show you as well. But I wanted to show you a few different options just so that you can work with what you have. 
Now this one, you can see, I did a, a sample run here and this one was a lot more intense. So I realized that I wanted to have a nice soft touch to give that real spring feeling. And I'm going to show you something else here, which looks hilarious when I bring it in. But you guys know where I'm coming from here. Look at what you can do. You can take your half a doilies, because I've given everyone half of a doily. Can I please have water? <gasps> Were you watching me upstairs and you read my mind? Oh, you. Moms are just the best. Thank you. Oh, Christy messaged you. <laughs> Oh, family, what would I do without you? Mwah! I just love you to bits. <laughs> my sister-in-law is watching Christy, and she messaged my mom upstairs, and here, water delivery. I don't have to drink re-inkers tonight. Woohoo! <laughs> Hello, darling. I see you, too. I'll play Pikachu. <laughs> okay, Parker. So what I've done here is taken our doily. It's cut in half so that um, I could maximize it for everyone. And we're going to, you can mask it if you want, or you can do the halo look if you want. So whatever, whatever you prefer. So this one here, I just wanted to show you the different look that I'm doing. And we're going to use this doily with the gold side out on the next project. So that's why we have to do this one first, get your masking done, and then you can make the next project here. So I'm going to put my beautiful <laughs> um, post-it noted uh, doily on there. And let's, um, let's mix something up here. Let's make something fun. So what did I... What did I get for myself? I, I planned this earlier here, so let's see what color I chose out. Um, I should mention as well, you can also just do direct into your ink pad with this. So imagine this ink pad is open. You're going to take your blender brush and you're going to rub it around in circles and then you're going to swirl it on. Okay, so you can definitely do that as well. I'm doing a blended re-inker with our champagne mist shimmer paint all right so we're going to just put one drop of this champagne shimmer mist paint on here so one drop and this really is paint you could use it all this you know all on its own you definitely could do that as well I love using my take, take your pick tool to kind of create a little bit of a palette. So why don't we do a test run here with just the champagne shimmer. I have, <laughs> I prepped myself so many extras so that I could show you all these different techniques. Okay, so I'm going to show you just the shimmer paint by itself. This is the sponge dauber. I don't think I need to show you guys that, but I'll show you what a sponge dauber is anyways. I store mine like this. Lots of people have different ways of storing them. But all you do is, again, pretending your ink pad is open, you're just going to ink it up, and then you're going to kind of color and sponge through there, okay? And it's going to give you a very loose application of color. You know, the um, at some points, part of your flower is going to be green or purple or whatever, but it's, you know, that's just the look, right? Soft and, and um, beautiful. So let's pull some of this out here. And I'm going to set up another card here so I don't booby trap myself. I have half and half. Wouldn't that be something that I would do? Here we go. Okay, so I'm pulling it out because I don't want to stick my blending brush into that big glob because you know what's going to happen on the paper then, right? It's going to turn into a big glob. So let's just start here. And this is going to be a really beautiful, subtle look. The champagne... Shimmer Mist is also translucent, transparent, whatever. Ooh, I'm almost <laughs> knocking my water over, you guys. That's exciting. So let's take this off, and we can see what has emerged. Can you guys see that? It's beautiful. It's subtle. It has a lot of shimmer in real life, and uh, it will dry just looking just like that as well. Okay, so that's one option for you. Let's do another option here where we mix up some re -incur. So I'm going to use Balmy Blue. This one here that I did was just Jade. So it's a little bit of a brighter kind of aquamarine. So I'm just going to put that on there like that. Just kind of like half of a, a droplet. And then I'm going to use again my palette to mix this up. 
and then I can just, I call it a palette, palette knife is what I'm referencing. And then we're going to get that going here. Put our, um, I'm going to take the masking off. Look at this beautiful job that I did though. It is all bendy, so depending on the look that you are going for, you know, you'll have to kind of follow the curves of that. And now I can post it note all my catalogs next time with beautiful shimmery, <laughs> beautiful shimmery um, post it notes. Okay, so this balmy blue is looking beautiful. It actually looks quite similar to the Just Jade in this application. Now I move this here. You guys saw that. So I'm just going to have to realign it, which is not a big deal. And then we're just going to keep using the blender brushes. Now these bl blender brushes are uh, in high demand from Stampin' Up! right now, but I promise you they are worth it. You are definitely going to want a set of these. You'll just want to use it for everything. So of course, once you finish half of it, I'll show you what that looks like. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love it. Um, and then you're going to flip it over and do the other half. And we don't care how these meet up because in the middle here, we're going to be covering it with this ribbon, okay? So um, what? how should I finish this one? Um, hmm, I think I'll have to do this, but I might have to mix more color. It might be more subtle on the other side. Let's see, maybe I can use a little bit more muscle, muscle my way through this. I love these brushes. They've got a really nice handle on them, has a bit of give, and they are truly brushes. Let me see, maybe I can show you this with a catalog here. Sometimes my camera doesn't like to focus. Can you guys see all those bristles? They're not sponges. It's truly bristles, and you want to just rub your face with them all the time. Okay, let's make some more of this. It's too good not to. It's beautiful. You guys get to see me do this again. So if you're crafting along with me, guess what? Tonight, I'm going to be going faster than you, and that is because of a few things. First of all, these are my designs, and I've made them before, and <laughs> I... Um, don't expect that you would be able to read my mind and know exactly what you're doing all the time. So you might find that at points, I kind of leave you in my dust and I apologize for that. But please know that this replay is going to be available forever. The people who are watching this on replay after tonight are just laughing. They got it made in the shade. They're so excited because they're pausing me whenever they want, right? But I'm so glad for those of you who are joining me live. It's really special to think that we can connect in this way still. Oh my goodness, where is that? There we go, here we go. It was so faint that I didn't have very much to go off of. There we go. So pretty. I just love that shimmer paint. Ooh, look at that, that got a little bit more intense. We can go back here and we can put this over here. We can keep layering it up. Guys, we'll be here all night just lining up stencils and <laughs> putting on more and more and more. Is that how you want to spend your night? No, probably not. But I hope this inspires you. This is, a, you know, one way of using any doily or any pattern like that. We also sell masks. So you can, you know, make some really cute projects that would have the same kind of similar look. But using Stampin' Up's masks, and um, you can just keep reusing them. You just wash them off. I've got some baby wipes here, and I like to wipe up my silicone mat. Sorry, did I say that that's what this was? This is a silicone mat, you guys, and it is so good for so many purposes. But I really like using it as a palette with my brushes. Now, if you've watched my video on how to clean these brushes, I've actually left this, even with the shimmer paint on there, for four days, and then just using water, um, it washes right out. If, you know, you find that it's a little bit stubborn, then, of course, you can use our Stampin' Mist. And look at how old this bottle is, you guys. This is retro. That's like, you know, 15 years old right there. But yeah, don't stress about this, because I've definitely forgotten about those, and then had to clean them later, so... Um, it's not going to ruin them. Okay, so while I've got my baby wipe out, I'm just going to take off any of this excess here just so that it doesn't end up on my fingers when I'm doing it on the next project. Oh, and I should mention too, while you've got your baby wipe, just do the front of it as well. Because on the front, let's 
see here. On the front of it, you're going to have a little bit of film on there. Can you guys see what I'm talking about down here? There's a little bit of a film and that's just residual from the process of laser cutting. So when they use the laser to cut these papers, they actually have like a little bit of residue. And frankly, you know, it takes an extra step, but I think it's worth it to have that beautiful look of that laser cut image, okay? Uh, let's put some of these to the side here. Okay, if you are looking at my um, sheets, my instruction sheets that show you which colors coordinate, I have it wrong right now. So in the email that I sent out to any of the people who got club cards, I apologize because I reference actually like an old color that isn't available anymore. But the one that you want is Highland Heather. That's this paper color. This is actually gorgeous great, but I find that it works really, really well with these colors together. Okay, let's start putting this together. We're going to use our stamp and seal. And we'll put our ribbon on. You guys have noticed, if you've got the projects in front of you, that I have a score line that I did down the middle and that was to help you out to figure out which side is I don't know if you can even see that online but um, the exact center of the paper so that's just an easy quick way and I knew that it was going to be hidden by the location of this ribbon so it's a little bit of a tricky way of getting you just that half of a doily so that more people can make this project now we've got our Highland Heather uh, cardstock I've already done some dimensionals on the back side there and then we're just going to put some adhesive on here the stamp and seal if you're having troubles with your stamp and seal um, this is actually something that we had to use for a technique that we had to use for a previous product that we had called fast fuse but I find that as you finish up putting on the stamp and seal you just have to do a little check mark so check and then that seems to just break the adhesive so it doesn't fling everywhere. Okay, so grab your Highland Heather ink, or if you don't have Highland Heather, you just grab your memento, you grab a soft gray, you grab anything that would work. This is such a neutral design that you could use any color of ink with this and it would be perfect. And then of course you want a stamp set that's going to fit into this beautiful tag. So I'll show you the one that I used. Timeless Tulips. This one here is so beautiful. It also has a punch that coordinates with the um, tulip, the big tulip, and one of the leaves. So it's really easy to use. And I like that I could use, you know, four of the different sayings on there. So I've got one card with what a beautiful difference one single life makes. Happy Easter, happy spring, happy, happy everything. Get well soon. And then I'm going to be doing one with Happy Mother's Day too, because you always... It's always nice to have a Mother's Day card ready to go just in case. And many of you also have, you know, mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, um, grandmothers, right, um, that you can give these cards to. So it's nice to have a few Mother's Day cards. So I've already stamped this. You guys will forgive me for that, right? You want to see how we stamp? I'll sh All right, I'll show you. So this beautiful tag, you can tell I was conserving paper and I love doing this little trick of sneaking this out of the middle because nobody's going to know that it was missing there. And if you are ever having trouble stamping, like getting good contact, it might be because your table is bowing a little bit. So that's what these tables do for sure. So I've actually got the Stamparatus grid paper, which I think is just a perfect little size for scrap paper. You know, you don't have much wastage. Um, compared to the bigger sheets which are also available and you can purchase these both as customers you can actually even purchase this beautiful flowery one so when you're inking it up just make sure you're going straight into the ink pad you're not rocking back and forth when you rock back and forth and you ink up the block and then you're probably going to ink up your project too because there, there's extra ink everywhere I still can't believe about that water delivery. That is just like a highlight of the day for me. Thank you. Thanks, Christy, my little buddy. All right, happy Mother's Day. You know, that's a, another beautiful one that you could use, right? Okay, I'm gonna put on Get Well Soon. That's what's on my mind right now. So um, we're gonna use some 
dimensionals to stick that on. And dimensionals come in the large size and the mini size. I really like the large size um, personally because I find that it's easier to peel the backs off. But there's definitely a time and a place for those smaller ones. Now we're going to take our pearls. I'm using take your pick tool. This one I've got the die brush attachment on there. That's why it's looking a little bit clunky. But I've got so many of these around. I've got um, you know the double ends on them. But I find I love just having a whole bunch on hand. I'm notorious with um, adhesives and also take your pick tools. Oh, where did that one go? Here we go. Take your pick tools and adhesives. They always hide on me. Okay, so we've got those beautiful pearls on there. And now we're going to take, you can see there's a little bit of twine here. And um, not everyone got these projects, right? As I mentioned, these are a free project for when you pick up. So if you're looking for this twine, you're actually going to be looking for the butterfly pack. So just take a look there. And guys, like, talk about thrifty. But I didn't, I thought, well, I'm not going to waste it, right? Put it on two projects. But we're going to actually pull this twine apart so it makes two pairs of twine and you'll see what I mean as you start to fray it and sometimes it goes easier than others sometimes it kind of gets all twisty but I find if you just keep kind of pulling and kind of straightening it out and then pull some more there's actually four pieces that are kind of intertwined together and this is just a way of getting a more dainty look so leave one set of two to the side and we'll use that on the butterfly card and then we'll use the other one on this card here I just clean that up for myself now you can see I used I have my twine in different colors and I wanted to show you how you can do that I really like using it you know with um, a sponge dauber what color do you think? Maybe we'll bring in a soft pink color. So let's use petal pink. I wanted to show you this. Um, you can of course use your blends and color on these. That would be really great for um, darker colors especially because as I was tying this one here, some of the ink did come off on my fingers. That's um, pretty peacock. But with this light color, I can actually just stick it right into my ink pad and then I just use the sponge dauber to hold it down and then I just draw it through you know however many times to get the color saturation that I want and now I've got pink ribbon started with white and you're going to hear this over and over and over again for me tonight but I'm going to keep saying it until it um, is like a mantra in your head anything white can be turned into any color that you want Okay, so just remember that we've got, you know, some white, beautiful thread here, and we've turned it into any color of the rainbow. So I mentioned about the Stampin' Blends. Those are our alcohol-based markers, which are beautiful for coloring, but also very versatile because they're an alcohol-based. They're similar. You can think of them like a Sharpie. Grab your mini two glue dots. Um, but they're like a Sharpie, so when you color with them, you actually, you don't have to worry about the colors moving around at all afterwards. They stay put. So we've got that beautiful little thread on there, and it's a little bit more dainty than using the thread by itself. And then just come on over with some of your scissors, snip off the end, and there you go. You've got your cute little card there. All right, so what I always do, in addition to my supply list that I email, I also take you through the catalogs and show you where these products came from so that you can find them. And the catalogs are so beautiful. If you don't have a set of them, please just shoot me a message and I'd be happy to get some, get some to you. So our first thing that we've got is of course our gorgeous grape ribbon. I think this one might be not orderable right now, but let's check it, okay? Now, we've also got the potted succulent dies that I used. So not the stamp set, but I used the dies for this beautiful shape here that goes on the front of our card. They've got two more of these that have the stitching and get cut out as well. 
in addition to all those beautiful dies that we used last month that I actually haven't even replaced into my pack here. They're floating somewhere at home. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I'll find them eventually. And then we've got our snail mail twine combo pack. So this is the one where you can get the twine in that nice white color and turn it into whatever color that you want. And then over on this page here, blending brushes. Again, I think those are not available from Stampin' Up! right now. Um, but let me know if you are interested in those and I'd be happy to keep you posted on the status update of those. Timeless Tulips is a stamp set that I use, which included all those beautiful different sayings for all different occasions. And of course, um, anything that has an outline like this means that it's got something that coordinates with it to cut it out. So you can see the tulip there and the little leaf get cut out. And this is one of our distinctive stamp sets. So that's a special um, invention actually that Stampin' Up! created and it's a um, photorealistic stamping experience so when you put the stamp on the paper it looks really highly detailed and really photorealistic so that's really fun way I love all of those distinctive stamps okay what else did we use here we've got our sponge daubers maybe you use those maybe you use the shimmer paint I don't know what else all kinds of stuff you could do all kinds of things with masking so I hope you're inspired to do some fun techniques. And then, of course, on page 156, we've got my one of my favorite, which are these pearl basic jewels. And those you can even color with your Stampin' Blends alcohol markers. So hope that you see anything white now and you think, oh, what color could I make this? I can make it any color of the rainbow. I'll put all my little packages to the side here. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next card. Now you might, you know, have to put your half-made cards to the side, and that's okay. You might not finish them up tonight, um, but guess what? This video is not going anywhere. You can watch it on replay, or you can keep, you know, crafting along with me and hitting the techniques that I'm showing you, and then you can go back and do the assembly afterwards. Again, I hope you're commenting along. I want to know which cards are your favorite, what colors you're using. I'm living vicariously through your stamping. I miss you guys. It's been a year since we were in person, and uh, it really does fill my heart with joy to see the creations that you guys come up with and how you guys customize these to your own taste. So this is our next card here, and I wanted to show you how I used, again, let's see how I used that paper pumpkin card to create two cards. So this is my very clever way of using both. So I cut this card down a little bit, quarter of an inch down on all ways, and then I cut it in half and put it on some vanilla cardstock base. So then one has the pattern and then one was plain and I used um, an embossing folder along with our cut and boss, the big boss machine to create this texture. Now I had a lot of people asking me um, about the difference between two of these folders because they seem kind of the same. This is the painted texture folder. This is a brand new one out of the mini catalog and this is the one that I've used if you've got a solid piece of Mary Merlot, that's the color of this by the way, Mary Merlot, if you've got a solid piece of that, that's what I've used to texture it. Now there's also an embossing folder out of our annual catalog that looks like it's kind of similar but really it's quite different in person. So I want you to take a look at both of those. Can you guys see that? So um, which one do you like better? Please comment. Do you like painted texture or do you like the old world embossing folder? Dory this one's for you my dear. Um, we have to make a decision at some point, you know, which one you like or else you just choose to get both with free shipping, right? Woohoo! So um, let me know what you think. I like them both. This one to me feels a little bit more artistic and modern. Uh, obviously, this is old world, right? Um, that's kind of what it's made to look like is that old crinkled parchment paper. But I thought that that comparison was going to be good for you guys to see. So and then also with this layout here you just cut the doily in half and then you can use it on the two different cards so uh, there you go there's a design uh, alternative that you can use if you want to switch up and use your kit in a different way again i've got those 
paper pumpkin kits that you can purchase from me. Um, the full kit is, including stamps and ink, is um, $30 and the refill kit is $15. So I'm just going to use my bone folder to get a nice crease here. That just makes it so that your card doesn't open up on its own. It just really um, folds it nicely. All right, so we've got our cardstock base. Let's start putting this together. Guys, I cut these long and I just realized this last night in our live event. So um, we'll have to do a little bit of trimming, but that's okay. Better long than short, right? What color do you guys think this is? Any guesses? Should I tell you? Who looked at my supply sheets and knows the answer, smarty pants? All right, I'll tell you. This is Rococo Rose and Mary Merlot. An unlikely combination, but again, that's what Paper Pumpkin told me were the colors in this kit. So I went matchy matchy and I just pulled the colors from there. So you'll see it's a little bit longer, guys. I'm sorry about that, but we'll, we'll just turn that off. Now, one other thing that maybe you'll want to kiss me over um, is putting some adhesive sheet onto the back of the Sahara Sand cardstock before I ran it through my paper cutter. So you've got this tiny little strip of Sahara Sand and you don't have to worry about any finicky adhesives. Just peel off the backing and you can turn anything into a sticker with these adhesive sheets. They're my favorite specialty adhesive and they're a must-have even if you don't have the cut and emboss machine, the Big Boss. You don't have to worry about if you don't have the big boss. You can use it with um, your paper cutter, with punches, all different kinds of things. And it's really handy for a little strip of paper like that. Ooh, that was funny. I think you guys have had a good feed so far, but that one just got weird for me for a second there. Okay, I've got dimensionals on the back. And we'll just peel off the backing and we'll stick that onto our cardstock base. You always want to check that you're opening your card the right way. That's such a rookie mistake, but everyone makes it no matter how long you've been crafting. I know that you've made that mistake before. I'm going to use some stamp and seal on the back side of this doily and I just kind of bend my card which lifts up the edge of this and I can tuck it right in there. Ta-da! And so it's not glued down here, but it's really staying in place because of the stamp and seal. Stamp and seal is just a beautiful adhesive. I really like how it sticks my cards together and I don't have any problems with it. I'm conditioned though to do that little check mark. You'll notice it now that I've said it you probably see me doing it for any adhesive that I use. All right for this card here I've used Rococo Rose as my ink pad because I'm a matchy matchy kind of a gal so I matched to this cardstock here. You could use the um, Mary Merlot, you could use Sahara Sand, you could use black, you could use gray. So just grab whatever ink pad that you have and, um, and then I'm sure it's going to look gorgeous. So I've got Rococo Rose and I'm grabbing my saying tonight from You Are Amazing. This is a really fun stamp set that includes sayings that are really cheerful and fun. And then also this one here, this You Are Amazing, I just think is beautiful. So classy. So I'm going to use this Hip Hip Hooray and actually put my tag on vertically instead of horizontally. You might have a large tag, you might have a small tag, depending on what I was cutting at that moment. I cut them up two at a time, so you might have one or the other. If you are getting multiple kits from me, so you're making like two of each of these cards, it's just $15 extra a month, but I always have kind of alternate designs. So if you, you know, got two different designs, you would get one of this and one of this. If you tell me in advance, then I can pair up so that it's perfect and, um, and you get to try it one of each of the different designs, right? Okay, so we're going to use our ribbon now. Did you guys even notice that there was ri ribbon on this card? Maybe you didn't. I'll show you where it is. I spy with my little eye. We've got ribbon there and there. So how do we get two little scallop edges from one. Well, we are thrifty. We're not just pulling twine in half, people, tonight. We are cutting ribbon in half, too. So if you wanted to just have the scallop on one side, of course, you would have cut it in half. That's fine. These are your cards. 
You can make them however you want. I have to put this away so I don't ink myself. But now I'm going to use my stamp and seal. And I just put two strips down the side here. You have to put it pretty close to the edge. So I think I was a little bit too far in on that one. There we go. That's going to be better. And then you just align it here. I'm going to use the front. And then I align the scallops. Stick it on. And then we can trim it off afterwards, the excess. I love hearing my kids laughing. What a gift grandparents are. Hey? I'm grateful here. Anyone who read my email knows what's going on, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to be over here, you know, living back home here um, while my husband isolates safely in our house. We are able to, you know, be in my family home that I grew up in. I'm sleeping in the room that I slept in when I was about 12 to 18. It's a little different now. But um, and then I actually had a desk right here, and this was my stamping area. And I just on the dance moves dance floor over here, where my mom now runs all of her dance moves classes online. Aren't we all online now? Um, but that's where I was holding my first classes. So shout out to those of you who have been around for 14 years, you guys. 14 years! And we were stamping right over there on a ping pong table. And we, we would pass the stamps around as we used them. It was so much fun, wasn't it? Okay, how do I want to do this? I want that doily to still show, so I want to tuck this over a little bit more. Oh, it's so cute. All right. Um, let's talk a minute about Rococo Rose because we've got some in colors that are leaving us this at the end of this catalog. So May 3rd is the last day that you can order some of our in colors. And make sure that you got re-inkers for them, you guys, because they're going to start to sell out. I don't know why at this time of year everyone goes, oh, I better get a re-inker. And so they end up selling out usually as soon as the retiring list is announced. But this is not anything new to us. We know that they're going to be retiring. So if you're wondering, we've got one set of in colors. That is retiring. Oh, you guys, I, I touched the glue dot. That's like the cardinal sin. Don't touch the glue dot. I'm having issues with my bow here tonight. So one set of five in colors is leaving us, okay? And we've got one set of five in colors that's continuing on for another year. And then we'll have another set of five in colors that is going to be joining us. And this is tough for Stampin' Up! to do. I don't envy them to forecast colors like this because they have to do it so far in advance. Like, they have to figure these things out like a year or more in advance. And it's amazing to me when I see um, when they get the trends perfect spot on and you start seeing those colors for fashion in the stores or maybe like the Pantone color of the year is announced and it's that exact shade. That's definitely happened before. So what do you think the next in colors are gonna be? Are they gonna be bright? Are they gonna be crazy um, happy? Are they gonna be soft and subtle? What do you think? I finished up the last part of that card kind of while I was talking here, but I tied the linen thread into a bow and then used a glue dot to hold that on. And then I put the champagne uh, rhinestones on there. These are like our regular rhinestones, but they're pre-colored with the champagne color and they're available from our annual catalog. They are so elegant and beautiful, aren't they? What do you guys think? Which one do you like? What do you think? I like this one the best. I like the You Are Amazing. I just think that's such a perfect stamp for so many different sayings. I think it's beautiful. Okay, let me show you where you can get some of these supplies. I'll put this one to the side because I think you're done with that one. If I'm guessing correctly. Okay, we will start here in our mini catalog. So that stamp set that I showed you, the You Are Amazing, that comes with that fun solid bubble that you can then stamp all the different things into, like happy birthday, you are amazing, congrats, right? 
This is actually coordinating to go along with our You Are Amazing project kit. Now, our project kits are different than our all-inclusive kits. So say, for example, this one here is all-inclusive. That means it includes the stamps, the ink, the block, and all the accessories that you need to make these cards. Fantastic and great to just throw in your bag when you're going on a little weekend trip somewhere. Um, they're great for stamping even in the car or, you know, if you are going up on a plane right now, you know, you can, you can bring that on the plane. Just don't bring scissors, of course. But the You Are Amazing project kit and any of our project kits come separately. So you get the card supplies and then you have to purchase separately a stamp set and maybe some ink pads that they recommend. This stamp set is not just an add-on to this kit. It is definitely a standalone stamp set. I think it is just so much fun and so cute and happy. So um, definitely put this one on your list if, if it appeals to you. I just think um, it covers all the bases and uh, you can make some really happy cards with it. Okay, also we have our painted texture 3D embossing folder. This one may or may not be available right now, but again, if you want something, we're just waiting on shipments right now. The problem is the containers are really slow for leaving for overseas. There's such high demand from COVID. Um, it's kind of screwed everything up in the shipping industry. Even in the pasta world, my mom's partner is um, dealing with shipping problems and stuff stuck in Italy for an extra month at a time. So um, we're just waiting on shipments right now. They have turned off the item numbers so that they don't charge or they don't get charged like double the shipping for everything but if you reach out to me I'd be happy to tell you when the items are going to be arriving at the warehouse and when they're going to be orderable again. Stampin' Up's really good about that now like once they you know put it on the inventory status report like the back order report um, they, it really sticks to that so it's quite accurate. All right we've got our champagne um what are these things called? Champagne rhinestone basic jewels. They come in a sheet with a whole bunch of them and they're in three different sizes. Maybe you got three different sizes. Maybe I was running out and I gave you three of the same size. I thought I had two packs of this, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happens sometimes in my stamp room. If anyone's been in there, they, they know. <laughs> it looks um, even worse than it did a year ago or more. So <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> Um, on this page here, we've got our five in colors, which are the scalloped linen ribbon. So pretty peacock, purple posy, rococo rose, seaside spray, terracotta towel. Those are the in colors that are all leaving us. And then also um, I use the linen thread. That's the one that's kind of the same color as the cardstock, which is the Harrison. And <clears throat> let's see what else here. Um, our adhesive sheets here those are the ones that you're going to want so there's also um what are the other adhesive sheets called um foam adhesive sheets are different these are the adhesive sheets that just lay flat the foam ones make like a puffy sticker so both are great options now the tasteful labels dies i want to show you these because they're so beautiful oh is this it tasteful labels dies painted label dies not tasteful labels. Those are, I tagged the wrong one, you guys. Uh, painted label dies are different. Let's find them. Let's fix this problem here. You guys cut me some slack, right, for making a few mistakes here. <laughs> I've got a few things going on. Oh my goodness, I don't know where they are, but they're definitely here. Uh, oh, you know what? They um, bundled them again. Here we go. Painted labels dies. These are the ones that go with the poppy, painted poppy stamp set. And it includes some really beautiful um, swirly images as well as one that's going to cut out a flower there from the stamp set. So there you go. That's that card. I should put this up here so I don't confuse myself. Okay. I'm going to keep going. And like I said, if you guys are crafting along with me, please cut yourself some slack because I've got to keep motoring. Otherwise, it'll be midnight and we'll still be just working our way through everything. You're going to grab now your butterflies, okay? I'm going to take you through all the supplies afterwards. I know there's so many of you who are keen on seeing this and I can't wait to show you the suite. Should I do it now? Yeah, let's do it now. You guys are maybe still working on that or your last card here. 
So let's, let's take you through what actually comes in this set. Okay, so again, you're going to want to get that kind of buy everything bundle because that gives you the Butterfly Brilliance. And let me show you this. It's one big stamp. It's as big as a card, right? Card front. So this is a highly detailed stamp image and you can even, for something this big, you don't even have to have a block. You can actually just use your case, lay it down like this, and then if you're stamping onto paper, you can use, um, what am I doing here? I don't have something that's this size. But anyways, you, you take your piece of paper and you can even do it like that, right? You just have to make sure you're not inking up the halo, but that's another way to do it. Of course, we do sell a big block like that as well if you, if you want to go that way. Butterfly Brilliance. And then we've got one massive die that's all interconnected. So you can stamp it once and cut it out and you get six beautiful butterflies. You can also use this on its own and that's what we're going to use on this project. So I've got the halos cut out but I've done no stamping for you so you can see how you can use this die with the other ones. Um, the other ones that I'm talking about are these highly detailed overlays that you can use again um, together or you can use this one just on its own. Vellum, white, black, any color you could do just that on your project and it would look gorgeous. And of course we've got coordinating butterflies for all six of those. Of those. And then we've got some really fun uh, other dies here. So we've got the bricks, we've got little butterflies, we've got this little speckles that would peekaboo any paper that you put behind it. And then this one here is that weird little texture one that doesn't cut out anything, it just impresses into the paper. So that would be, be putting like a little background texture onto some of your cardstock. So fun! I love the design opportunities with this set. Oh, I should put that away prematurely. Okay, so then we've got our designer series paper and you guys, I left my other pack at home. So I only have a few sheets to show you here, but isn't this fun? It starts off yellow in one corner. Let me get my spotlight here going on the right spot. Here we go. So can you guys see yellow and then it transitions to that nice, beautiful dark blue and the back side is just stunning. <laughs> all of these are stunning. So one side is all butterflies for each of the six designs of paper. And one side, so again, butterflies, right? And then the back side is more of like a graphic um, abstract, uh, sorry, more abstract look. This one here is my favorite on both sides. Why did you do this to me, Stampin' Up? How could I possibly choose? But we've got the beautiful butterflies on the front, and then the back side goes into these gorgeous blues, yellows, and pinks. But I want to show you something that's going to make your jaw drop. Look at this. Da -da -da -da. It cuts it out perfectly. So the paper is perfectly designed to go along with your big boss and cut out with the dies. <gasps> Blow your mind, right? Oh, it's stuff like this that I just, you know, I just want to write a letter of how much I love the matchy matchiness. <laughs> and I have never written a letter, but man, it makes me want to write a letter like that. Okay, so that's just a few of the designer series papers. If you want, guys want to see more about this suite, please watch my video that I have showing exclusively this. Um, the last product that we have in the collection is this gorgeous paper. It's birch and you can see it's got um, a design printed on it and then it's also got an impression on it too. It's textured and it's really quite lightweight. Um, the back side has a, a fun little subtle pattern but you could do all different kinds of of things with this. You could color it with your blends and you could make it look like whatever stained wood that you want. And those come in two sheets of 12 by 12 when you purchase that collection. Okay, I'm putting that away now so I can show you here. We're going to do a tri-fold card that um, is got a little bit of a wow factor here. My mom thinks I'm nuts for doing a card like this. She's like, Kelly, this is like two cards in one. She's like, you could just do less. And I think that every month, but then I get excited when I'm designing and I over design probably. <laughs> but this is the outside of the card. And then it opens up here to reveal the inside and then the inside. Ta-da! 
So this little card here um, has, of course, some watercolor paper on it that we're going to put our own pattern on. And then we're going to overlay the black. And we're going to stamp a little saying there. You can choose to do a little saying like that, or you can even do vertical like this. I haven't got this butterfly on here yet. But you could do whatever stamp sets that you want. I'll show you so you can start digging around in your collection which ones I'm using. So the first sample that I did here was with Beauty Abounds. And I'm just using Memento ink, the black ink that we have. It's tuxedo black is what they call it. Um, so I really like this stamp set because it's got Hello that's nice and small for that tiny little tag. And then on you know, the first panel, then I can say our friendship isn't one big thing. And then on the inside, I can say it's a million little things, right? This is one that's a friend is someone who chooses you out of a whole world of people. So I really like that this stamp set includes different sayings for the different panels. On this one here, uh, I've used Rooted in Nature, which is like our Lovely as a Tree that we've been calling Lovely as a Tree 2.0. Um, this one has a cute little saying there just for you. And then on the inside, I used You Are Wonderful. And for the sample card that I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to use Thinking of You on that inside panel. And on the outside, I'm using the Itty Bitty Greetings, um, Hey Friend. These ones are all really nice and small and they're all individual so I really like that you can find a saying that works perfectly for whatever occasion that you have going on. I, I'm always gravitating towards beautiful artistic images but then when I was first starting I realized oh my goodness I don't really have any sayings and that's kind of important too when you're making cards right you can write a whole story on the inside I definitely do that but I like to have something on the outside so that uh, itty bitty greetings is a fantastic set that's going to have you covered no matter what even happy Hanukkah which is a very hard stamp to find the Stampin' Up they just have the one so I'm going to fold these in now so that you have a reference as to what we're doing here the shorter panel is the one that's going to be the outside one the longer one is going on the inside and we're going to add some different things to them we're going to add this little black border and things like that so stick with me I'm going to show you some of my little bit of magic here because I've sure maximized this paper don't think that I'm that cheap though. I just really like um, using everything that I can. You know, here I am cutting twine in half, cutting ribbon in half, and now I'm using all the different pieces of paper. So I cut out, take a look at this. I cut out one of these nested label dies, and instead of just throwing out this piece of paper, I like to use it as a layer on my card. So I'm gonna put my designer series paper over the top here, and nobody's gonna even know that I have a whole shape cut out of it. Ha ha! My little secret. So on the back side here, I'm just going to put some stamp and seal. So we're working on the outside. This is the shorter panel, and we're going to put this right up against that edge. And I like to have it open so that I'm not doing white on white because that makes your eyes go, go pretty much crossed, right? Okay, so I've got that on there, and look at this. I still have a little bit of white on there. But that's where da, 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 our handy dandy scissors come in. You could also use a paper trimmer for this. But even if you put it on crooked, you can fix it. There's, there's no wrong ways of doing anything here. And even people who've been doing this for years and years and years still, you know, <laughs> put it on a little crooked. There we go. I got it sorted out now. Then we're going to put our designer series paper on. I have to have the butterflies facing out, but you have a hard decision to make. Which pattern do you want? The back side, the front side? Which is the back side, anyways? Oh, I don't know. So we've got that beautiful front panel. Now let's put some dimensionals on the back side of that beautiful wood grain piece. You could color this if you wanted to. That would take you a little bit more time, but you could really customize it. You can make it look like cherry wood or uh, any stain that you like. So we'll put that tag on there. Now I did a little bit of pre-stamping just because with my um, 
stand. It's really hard for me to stamp straight sometimes on the little tiny pieces because I have to get over top of it. So now I said all of this and now I can't even find my little thing. Hello, paper, where are you? Oh boy. Well, it might be gone. I don't know where it is. Okay, we'll, we'll keep going here. Let's work on the inside. So I'm going to take my stamp and seal and I'm just going to do one strip along the edge here. And this is an arbitrary width. That's just going to, it was just left over from when I cut out the pieces for this front piece. So don't tuck it too close to the corner, otherwise it's going to bow your card out. Okay, so you want it close, but not too close. And then you're going to figure out, again, which side of the paper you want. I'm going to go with the more abstract side. Because I've got butterflies on the front, I'm going to put these ones on the inside here. Just figure out whatever mat you like there. If it's longer, it's really... Oh, look at there. Oh, hey friend. I found you. It's really hard to get... Um, things cut perfectly when you're doing lengths like this so uh, I always try to err on the side of longer because I like it to just be perfect. All right and then on the inside we're going to put on our piece of black which is going to have that beautiful mat for our saying that gets stamped onto our white and I just centered that. It gets covered that way. I dropped a piece of paper on the floor here. There we go. So, Memento Ink. Where are you, my darling? There we go. So we got our Memento Ink. This is my favorite black ink. It just works. I really like the firmness of the pad. And uh, it works really well for me. I really like it. It's formulated to actually go along with the Stampin' Blends. You want to make sure you're, you've got it nice and juicy as well. So use your reinkers. Make sure whenever you're buying an ink pad, you're also getting the reinker. But my technique, especially for stamping something that's quite solid like this, is to do a twist, tap, tap. And I kind of do that all over just to get really good ink coverage. So twist, tap, tap. You'll think that in your head next time. Twist, tap, tap. Okay, and then also I press a little bit longer whenever I'm doing something that's a little bit more solid and it seems to just let the ink soak, soak into the paper a little bit more. I don't know if there's a science to these things. These are just the way that I do them. I don't know. This is, I lost, oh, there it is. <laughs> like I cannot have an open memento ink for the rest of this stamping experience. That's just a booby trap. <laughs> All right, so thinking of you, I can go ahead and glue that on. Oops. Look at that. I finished up a spool of that. And I do have one here. Now where did I tuck it? Oh, here it is. So that reminds me, Stampin' Seal and Stampin' Seal Plus have the same exterior case. There is a difference between the two of them. If you were to try to separate paper that you've um, used the Seal Plus on, you won't be able to get them apart. Even with a heat tool, it's really difficult. But I recommend getting one with a full case and then getting a refill of the other one. And you can use the case to try out both of them. It saves you a little bit, money, little bit of money from having to you know, purchase two of the cases. So you just throw out the inner part, then you use the case again. And uh, you've got, well, oh, I'll take a little bit of the, the goobers off of there. Sometimes they get a little bit of goobers on there. Excuse my language because I have kids and these are the words that we use sometimes. <laughs> but what else would you call them? The accumulation of stamping seal on the inside of the case. There you go. Goobers. <laughs> All right, we'll just stick that on there. And now it's ready to go for some butterflies. I should be showing you guys my finished card, not my like semi-finished card. So this is gonna be the inside here. If you had a third stamp, you could definitely put that on the inside. Okay, I've got two sets of butterflies going on because um, I've got some that are pre-done, but I wanna show you how I made these. So I'm using my, let's get these out of the way here. I'm using my water painter. So we did have aqua painters in the past. They were blue um, in the bottom here and they, 
I don't know, they had um, lip brush tips as well. They were really expensive. They were like two for $23. Now you get three for 16, which is a much better deal. And I find that the quality of these are much better as well. So if you've got these ones, I'm sure the ends are frayed treat yourself and get a set of new ones. You can use these old ones to seal up envelopes. They're great. And especially during COVID times, right? You just um, use the water to moisten the envelope and it seals it right up. Okay. Um, this one here also comes with this fun brush tip. Isn't that great? Um, it's a fan brush tip. So I like to kind of bunch it up when I'm putting it back in. So then I don't end up with like a crazy frayed brush. When you just put water in them, they screw in the opposite way. So when you get them, you're going to probably do it the normal way, pretty hard. <laughs> and then you're going to go, oh, Kelly said something about that being weird. <laughs> and then you're going to figure it out. I'm using a couple of reinkers. If you don't have reinkers, all you do is open up an ink pad. Don't use black, but I'm, this is the one I have handy. And you can just get a block and then you're going to stamp onto the block and that will create the same kind of palette. Okay. That's all I'm using as a palette, using the clear block as a palette. And then you can squirt some water in here. I'm going to bring in my scrap paper so I don't destroy my background sheet. I'm using Mango Melody and Melon Mambo. If you want to know the coordinating colors, you can definitely look at that promotional brochure or look at the instructions, or not the instructions, but the supply list that I emailed out. So I like to start off with a watercolor wash across the paper. This is our Fluid 100 paper, which is actually 100% cotton, and it behaves very different than paper that's made of wood. It handles water very, very well. And um, you can even, you know, put some color on and then dry it and then go back to it and put more color on. So I'm making this color combination to go actually with this card here. I made these ones last night and they were just too bright for that one, but they go perfectly on this one. So um, it's going to be different every single time. Every single time that you do this technique, it's going to be different. Now, because the colors are going to run together anyways, I don't worry about cleaning off my brush tip. If you're using contrasting colors, you could just use a baby wipe to quickly, you know, clean off that brush tip. Oh, it's so vibrant. It's so fun. You don't want to blend the colors together too much. Otherwise, they turn into the same color and then you've created your, your own new color. But it kind of gets muddled and muddy together. Now, if you had a heat tool, then that's when you'd want to use it right now. I'll just show you too how I'm cleaning off my brush. I'm giving it a squeeze and just using um, a baby wipe here to kind of take off the color off of that. You can also put these straight under the tap and they run totally clear. Something about the bristles, they don't soak up the color at all. Okay, I forgot my heat tool at home when I came over here to move back home. So I've got da 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 hair dryer. Okay, let's see. This thing is intense. Everything is going to go flying. I know it will. Let's see. What can I use? Take your pick tool. Put both of these together. Oops, I don't want to move. There we go. Oh, that's like. You can let this air dry. I'm just trying to accelerate things. You could also use a Kleenex to job off when you have the excess. I like using the two different variation. You can do it with one color. Oh, did you guys see that butterfly? It fluttered away. It really looked like it was alive there for a second. Okay, there we go. So that's just going to speed up the process. I'm still going to let it dry a little bit more just because of the adhesive that I'm going to use is a glue dot to put that on. And I want to make sure that it sticks really nicely. I don't have enough space here on this table either. <laughs> but we just go with the flow, right? I'm just going to use another baby wipe to clean off my block because if I leave a booby trap like that, I put uh, my projects in it. So 
Okay, let's clean up a little bit here. Wow, what a mess we've got going on here. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I've kind of got my card half done here. Let's finish up some more things. I've got some of these um, rhinestones. These are just the clear ones. They're my favorite go-to. I'm just going to stick them on here. I've got three of them. Two larges, or sorry, two smalls and a large. And stick that down there. I can take my twine. I'm just going to leave it white now. You guys know you could turn this into whatever color that you wanted. You guys love butterflies? I love butterflies. There's just something about a creature that is so gorgeous and so dainty. When you're putting on a little bow like this that is um, half the width of a normal thread, I actually like to use my take your pick tool to roll up the glue dot and then kind of stick it under there and it seems to just work a little bit better. So I stuck that on. I would usually stick on the hay friend first, but I got going on that bow. So that was me getting a little bit distracted and ahead of myself. So hay friend is going to go on there. I love these stitched nested label dies. Uh, they are just, I actually, um, when they first came out, I was presenting in Vancouver at our conference and I got to, uh, I received these actually from Stampin' Up as a, um, part of their compensation actually for presenting. And these are my most used dies that I've ever, ever, ever had. They are my favorite. Okay, so I've got these pink ones that are drying to go onto this card here, like pink and melon mambo. And then I've got these ones here that are already ready to dry, ready to go, they're all dry. So I'm gonna use, again, my mini glue dots. I use my mini glue dot, um, I use my whatever I'm gluing with to pick it up. Now, when you get yours, they are sometimes now putting them on this side of the paper. So if you get it like that, it's not a mistake, that's how they're doing it sometimes. So you'll have to give me feedback on what, if you like it or not. Change is hard, first of all. I uh, am with you on that. But I think then uh, Stampin' Up! also needs to hear too, so please pass it along to me which way you prefer if you do get some mini glue dots that are going the other way than what we're used to. All right, just did one mini glue dot underneath there, and then I'm actually just curling up these black pieces, the overlay pieces. They'll probably flatten out a little bit, but hey, I know that they were curled and then it will remind me to curl them again before I send them. Don't throw out your dimensional sheets. Just snip the sides and keep using these. It comes with 300 in a pack of these large ones and when you use the borders, well, you guys, you guys who have been stamping with me know the end of that statement, right? You get like a million of them. All right, so stick that beautiful butterfly on there. What am I gonna do with this? Ooh, that's pretty. It has to be in though a little bit because I want it to fit in an envelope. So let's see, I might have to do that friend afterwards. Just keep in mind that this card will wanna fit in an envelope. So you have to kind of move things around a little bit. Ooh, what am I gonna do? What does a person do, you guys? We put it like this. There, go with the flow. Hey friend, there we go. Let's switch up the design with that beautiful big one. There we go. Okay, so we've got the outside and then on the inside, then we can stick this one on. I think, did I put it on with a dimensional? I did. It kind of makes it um, not fold completely flat, but hey, you know what? I think it's worth it for the look. Okay. Fold flat, I mean like that. It kind of has a little bit of a bump out there. All right, you good with that? So of course, you got all six different butterflies and I tried to pair them up. If you have found that there's some little pieces here that you have to pop out, I apologize. Um, some of the butterflies 
did not cut out maybe as well as the other ones. If you're having trouble with that, just peel from the back side. And then if you have to peel off a bit of um, the rest of the butterfly, it, it doesn't damage the front of it. So maybe I'm late in telling you that. I'm sorry if I am. I hope it works. The, the reason is because um, I realized partway through that it works best if you're aligning on your cutting plate going through the machine. If you are cutting through so the roller goes one butterfly, two butterflies, three butterflies, instead of putting them like this and having it cut out two butterflies at a time, it seems that with the detail dyed that it just sometimes can have a problem with that. So. Keep that in mind if you're crafting at home. With this, it was no problem at all. I even did it on that thick paper, right? That um, Fluid 100 watercolor paper, and it didn't have any problem at all. It just cut it right through. But you can see how detailed those are. That could cause a problem depending on um, your machine. The nested label stitch dies, I used four of them on this project. I used the three largest ones and then the smallest one, just to give you a bit of size reference of what all is included in the kit, or in the pack, I should say. And now, let's go through the catalog as you guys are still crafting. And I'll take you through here, the annual catalog first. Uh, what did I say on this page? Oh, Rooted in Nature is one of the stamp sets that I used. And Beauty Abounds is another stamp set that I used. On this page here, we've got our water painters. Again, three for $16.25, a really good deal. And these ones, I like the quality of them much better. With the scoring that I did for you to create that trifold, I actually used the Simply Score tool, which looks like this. It's got the grid on it and it's got all these grooves and this little tool that comes with it. And so you can actually just score the lines in whatever pattern that you want. It's great for boxes and things like that. Um, something else that we sell that will do kind of the same thing is our paper trimmer which has a cutting blade and also a scoring blade on the same arm so you would just use the ruler and you can figure out where you want to do those scores to create a trifold card like this. I've got some specialty paper on here the fluid 100 watercolor paper again 100% cotton so it behaves very different than any of our other papers. Um, some papers that we have would really break down if you're using as much water as we were on this project so um, just keep that in mind as you are you know crafting to to make sure that you're matching the paper to the amount of water and liquid that you're using. We've got, of course, our rhinestone jewels. These are our core product. And again, anything white can be colored. So you can make your own rhinestones that are colored with champagne, like the ones that were used on the last project there. And then the stitch stitched nested label dies. And you'll see that any of these icons here mean that you can use them with the mini machine that we have now. It's about half the price almost. And um, it's half the width half the weight and it folds up really nicely as well so make sure that you check that out if you're trying to get into paper crafting and you want a tool that's going to do a lot but won't cost you a lot uh, from this catalog here we've got of course got our snail mail twine combo pack that we used on our other card and then we've got our butterfly let's see, the butterfly bouquet collection and that's the Butterfly Brilliance collection that you are going to want to get to save 10% on the papers and the dies and the stamps. Everything, all in one for 10% savings. Okay, I'm just gonna reset here for the next project. There we go. Alrighty, I'll leave this up in the corner here so you guys can have that as a reference as you're finishing up that card. But I encourage you, you know, if you're stamping along with me, to just set that aside regardless and then move on to the next card here so that you can do some of the tech techniques along with me. We're going to use the package that looks like this and we're going to create a card that has no stamping on it. Um, this is Stampin' Up! that, you know, products that we're using. It's not called die cut it up. 
it doesn't have quite the same ring, but I sure love this card, which has no stamping on it. It only has dies, die cuts. And you can, of course, make it into fall colors. You can make it into summer colors, or you could even take it brighter on the leaves because it seems like for springtime, it's always a brighter green than any other time of the year. Hey, do you guys find that too? It's like maybe I've just been waiting for it for so long that the green um, seems brighter, but I think it's a thing. Like, is spring green brighter? I think so. Okay, we're going to do a whole bunch of customization on this, okay? I'm going to show you a couple of different things. We are using um, a die cut branch. You'll see I left it attached here. I've got some of the adhesive sheet on the back and um, so it doesn't really separate too well. So don't worry about poking out all the little holes. It's actually going to make our lives easier as we color the leaves to be whatever color that they want you want them to be. Um, this is Sahara Sand, so it's a nice light brown. If you wanted to add more texture into the bark, you can do that too. Um, I've mostly seen this coming in as a branch, but we're going to turn it into a tree. So you can see here, we're going to go straight vertical with that. And when we do that, we have this little piece that's going to be trimmed and left over. And that's what creates our little plant that goes into our terracotta pot. Okay. So let's just keep that in mind. Then we've got a whole bunch of pieces here. We've got shutters that already have the wood grain in them. Let's just adjust here with the light and then you can see that a little bit better. Can you see the wood grain? Isn't that fun? <laughs> and then we've got our brick background, which we can use blending brushes to create more texture on, or we can just leave as plain. And we can even use our Stampin' Blends to create a wood grain for our um, little shelf. You can even use it for your frame, whatever you want there. You can see they come white, but again, anything white can be colored. And um, with this one here, I've actually put a little bit of our, uh, what is it? It's our Seaside Spray, which matches our cardstock base here. Um, Stampin' Blends on the back side of this window sheet. I don't know if you can even see that, but it's got a window sheet in there to give the reflection of glass in behind the frame. Ah, so cute. Okay, <laughs> here we go, you guys. Are you ready for this? All right, let's start with maybe the bottom layer. Let's go with your bricks now. What are we gonna do with bricks? Are you going to um, leave them white? Are you gonna use a blending brush? Maybe are you going to use crumb cake like I did on this card here? Or maybe you'll use terracotta tile, which is another one of our in colors, which is leaving us, along with our seaside spray here is leaving us. Okay, so when you're using your blending brushes, okay, swirling around in a circle, maybe you guys can see that, there we go. Swirling around in a circle, you can put as much pressure on as you want. When you're applying it to your card, don't stick it right on because you might get a sploosh, okay? So put it down on the paper and then you can try it out a little bit and then you can lightly start applying it to the paper. This is fun. I love um, the look of this embossing folder because some of the bricks are sticking out more than others and uh, it's a really fun look. I'm kind of switching around the direction that I'm doing sometimes. Again, trying to do even pressure regardless. This is turning out a little bit more pink than I wanted, but I'm gonna make a custom color here now. Now I can, of course, wash off these brushes. I can also really, you know, massage it in here. If I had another brush handy, which I don't know if I do, I think I've used four already. I'm just going to go into my crumb cake here. Typically you'd want to go from a lighter color to a darker color, but for this, you know what, I'm just going to chance it. I think it's going to be okay. There we go. Putting a little bit more of the brown tones in. Less pink, more brown. Isn't that fun how it really pops out the texture? You can really see which bricks are sticking out more than others because it uh, has picked up more ink. You could keep going with this all day, however much you want 
in terms of color. You could make it almost like a dark brown if you wanted to, but I'm really happy with that look there. Can you guys see that? Isn't that incredible how it just pops it right out? I hope you're using the like button and the heart button. I can't wait to see which techniques and things you like because I know what excites me, but I want to hear what excites you so that I can keep doing that every month. I want to keep you coming back for more with, you know, exciting techniques and um, innovations and keep stretching you outside of your little comfort zone, right? Show you some new products and some things that you can use differently that you might even have in your collection already. I'm going to keep using my little dimensional border here. Stick that on. There we go. And pop that on here. Oh, I really like that. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Oh, you guys, that was silly. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put custom backers on there. Now, the reason why I didn't want to do that yet is because I need to trim off my tree with the edge there. So that's why I'm going to just cover this up again so it doesn't get stuck all over my projects that I'm working on here. Let's see if this works. This sometimes works, this sometimes doesn't work. Maybe I put them even the wrong way down. Oh, there we go. It's okay. Okay, so I've got that. I fixed my little error in judgment. Let's put that aside. Don't adhere it on yet because we need to do the tree. Should I try doing a nice bright one? Oh, I don't know if I even have the markers, the right markers. I'm going to go green. Green is the easy way. This is, um, I used three different colors here. Um, orange, red, yellow. <laughs> Something. I don't know what they were. Poppy Parade, um, Terracotta, no, sorry, Cajun Craze, and uh, Mango Melody, actually. And then I used another yellow one. I used a Daffodil Delight. So there you go. Okay, this is going to be kind of slapped on here with color, but it's going to look okay. I promise you, everything's going to be okay. I left the branches kind of um, the Sahara sand color, but we're going to just apply some color here. And then I'm going to go over top of the darker color with a lighter color that's going to blend it all. Now we don't have to worry too much about this side. If you are really, you know, um, having a hard time remembering that, you can even uh, do a line here just to tell yourself like, don't focus on that. That's going to be the plant that comes out here, right? You can make it double layer or single layer depending on how much you cut off. But let's go back to what we were doing here. Just applying some of this dark kind of throughout, leaving the branches. You can color the branches if you want. Just depends the look that you're going for. And now we can come back in and I'm going to use this lighter version of the same color. So all of our blends come in duos. They have a light one and a dark one. So this is the old olive color that I'm using here. And the blends are such a magical tool because even after the ink is on the paper, it still can be manipulated. So you can use your light color to go over top of the darker one and move the color around still. It's so cool. So I think that this is a really fun and easy way to get a nice custom tree. You could cut this out of white if you wanted to and then color the whole thing, even the trunk, but I thought a head start with it being cut out of Sahara sand was kind of a happy way to expedite the process. Okay, there we go. That's looking good to me. It doesn't look so great when you actually look at it on the paper, but after it gets um, popped out, you'll see it looks a lot better. So again, we've got our adhesive sheets on the back there so I'm just going to start peeling this off and you'll see that a lot of the background just stays right with the paper and so we don't have to worry about poking out all those little pieces like sometimes we have to do. There will be a couple you know you can see there's a couple here. I like to use you know either my finger or you can use you take your pick tool 
and even a, a piece of paper that you can poke it onto. If it's got the adhesive on the back, then the piece of paper will just stick the um, adhesive straight onto it. Okay, there we go. This little bit here. There we go. Now we can stick this onto, oh, you guys, I'm doing this all out of order. I'm all flustered tonight. Okay, I'm not going to press it on. But I'm just going to stick on the trunk part of it. And then I'm going to slip my window in afterwards. <laughs> it, it's almost like I didn't make these exact same projects last night. <laughs> I lost my marbles. Okay, let's just go down here and we're going to trim off this excess. We'll finish up with this tree here while we're thinking of it. And we're going to turn some of this into a plant. Okay, so you can use this piece, you can use, um, you know, another piece here that you can color the entire thing in. I like to make it look a little bit different than the tree, so I'm using the darkest color, and then this will be ready to go. I have a plant that looks exactly like this at home, and the, even the stems itself are green, so I'm going with the lazy one color green. Um, I'm not worried about this side here because I'm going to trim that off in a minute. So let's put this aside so I don't get tempted to glue more things down out of order. But calm yourself, Kelly. Get get a hold of yourself so that you don't get ahead of what you're actually doing here. Okay. Let's go put together our let's put together our window. So now is when you bring out all your little bits here. Look at even the little shutter has hinges. And that's what was cut out of this black piece here. I cut out, you know, this piece and butterflies and um, hinges all with one go. I didn't mention already, but um, these are clear envelopes. They're perfectly mailable. Don't throw them out. They are great. They give your postal worker a little treat as well. Can you guys see what I've got here? It's a piece of window sheet. It's like clear acetate. And I'm going to take my Stampin' Blends, which again are like a Sharpie, so you can color on anything with them. And I'm gonna use my dark seaside spray and just color. It sounds horrible. But I'm just gonna give a bit of a wash so that it um, looks like the reflection of the sky. There we go. I think that's going to be a-okay. Oh, it looks great. It's so subtle, you guys, but I think you'll see it in a minute. Let's start putting these pieces together. On the back side of our window frame, which I'm going to leave white, I'm going to show you the wood grain on this shelf again, but um, I did not use mini dimensionals. I use mini glue dots here. Just hold this on. And I just did two of them like that. Then you're going to, it doesn't actually matter, you know, which way you have your window sheet if you colored on it because it's, um, like I said, it's like a Sharpie. Now, if you happen to align it so that there's like a little bit of window sheet sticking up, again, just use your scissors. I cut it close, but I didn't want to like undercut it, so I haven't had to trim that. It's just the way that I aligned it on this one project. Then I've got a piece of white that's going to go in behind. I'm going to put glue dots basically in the same spot because I know that's going to hold it on. So two glue dots there on the back side of the acetate is going to give us enough adhesive to hold on this white. There we go. Can you guys see the difference between those two? The blue? Oh, it's so subtle. You can probably see a little bit more on this one. I squiggled a little bit more in certain spots rather than making it blue all over. Okay, then we're going to put dimensionals in the back side here. This card, I really feel like we're making art. Like we're really, you know, paper piercing or paper piecing things together and um, creating something really fun out of bits and pieces. So sticking that on there. I've already got dimensionals on here just to speed things up, but take a look at these shutters. They go through your big boss or your mini boss and it 
embosses them as well as cuts out the outline. So fun! There we go. Now because I haven't pressed down that tree, I can put the tree in front. Oh, so silly. There we go. Now, if I were, you know, thinking ahead, I would have done my trick. You guys know how I love those adhesive sheets, but I didn't put adhesive sheets on the back of these little hinges. So I apologize for that, but just roll a mini glue dot in half, or you can even use um, like a Tombow adhesive or uh, fine tip glue pen. I'll show you what those look like too. Tombow adhesive. And they call it multi-purpose liquid glue, but we call it Tombow because that's that's the company. And I'll show you here a really fun trick. Our take your pick tool has putty on one end here, and so you give it a little squeeze and it starts coming out. Then release the pressure so it doesn't just keep squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And then I like to flip them over so that they've got that little dot, and I can use the take your pick tool to actually hold it in place as I spread the glue on the back. Isn't that amazing? Then I can take off this side here, I can place it onto my project, and then I can use the pointy part to place it down. Okay, now let's do that again. Da -da -da. This is so handy whenever you're doing anything kind of finicky. It just works like a pair of tweezers, but even better than that. There we go. Okay, and then let's, for the last one here, instead of Tombow, I'll show you how to use this fine tip glue pen. This is probably my favorite adhesive for fine uh, applications. It's got this great nozzle and then this little post that goes straight inside it. So it um, stays clear all the time. Again, I'm going to flip it over so that You'll see it in person, maybe. There's um, a little round circle that gets embossed, and that's the side that I'm looking for. That's why I'm flipping these over. But now I'm going to just put this fine tip glue pen across. Both of these glues dry clear. A little bit shiny, but still clear. There we go. And so now we can press our tree down over top. That's not a problem. I've got one little piece there that just snuck in there. There we go. Take that out. Oh, in there too. Look at that. There we go. And now we can trim off the excess everywhere. So I just flip it over, go to the back side here. Again, if I'm going fast for you, please don't stress. There's um, always the replay available, okay? I've made these cards before I designed them. So um, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm still doing it out of order, but I should know what I'm doing, right? One other thing that we're going to add on here is a little bit more color on this shelf. So I'm gonna get, grab some browns in kind of varying tones. And again, these are sold in pairs, but we don't have to use them as just their pairs, we can play around with them. So I've actually got the bronze, I think, or soft suede, do I have bronze here? Yeah, I do. This is kind of like one of our flesh tone colors. There's bronze and ivory that come together as a pair. So I'm gonna use bronze, ivory, and some dark soft suede, and dark crumb cake. Maybe I'll use light crumb cake. Light crumb cake, there we go. I'm going to start with the darkest one. I always do this. Some people do it lightest, light, then dark, then light again. I just, I like skipping a step. So I'm just going to do some lines here to create a little wood grain pattern. Now, I think the dark soft suede is actually going to end up being darker than that color that I just put on there. Yeah. And it's a little bit more of like a green kind of tone. I'm saying green, but you know, it's brown with like a bit, a hint of green. And now we can use some ivory. You could go as dark as you wanted with these, right? I might even have to go darker just because of my brick. I wasn't thinking about that. And then I'm just going to go over the whole thing with this broad brush tip. 
with the, what color is this? Light crumb cake. And that blends all the colors together. You can also use our color lifter, which is a clear, I've got so many blends here, you guys, I can't even find it. Yeah, I don't know where it is right now. Oh, here. Um, this clear one, it's the only one sold on its own. It's called the Color Lifter, and it works great to just go straight over the top and blend everything all in. We're actually going to use that here in a second as I put a little bit of texture onto our pot. So our flower pot there, I don't know if you can see this, there's a hint of a shadow line that I've created here. So I'm going to just do a fine tip gray granite and it, this one did start off looking like that too okay so gray granite and then I'm going to do just a color lifter like a swipe over the top like that and it's going to lift it so it's a little bit more subtle so again we can just have fun all day long creating custom colored things but anything white you guys are going to start finishing my sentence right anything white can be colored whatever color that you want that together I'm going to learn my lesson here and kind of put this together here first trimming off a little bit of the, the leaf there and pop out those two little pieces there we go oh, there's a little bit more that I don't want there we go and now we can take our dimensional off I've already put that on there and I'll trim off the extra here. There we go. And then I've got my little terracotta pot, which is actually surprisingly not done with the terracotta paper. It's actually Cajun craze paper that I thought was kind of the perfect color for that terracotta pot. All right, you guys, look at this. All I have to do is put it onto my cardstock base and we're good to go. Look at this. I was able to cover up my dimensionals and avoid catastrophe. There we go. So you could have a lot of fun with this. This turned out a little bit more pink than what I would like. Um, I would finesse it a little bit more if I weren't, you know, live on the internet. <laughs> but um, that's the wonderful thing with the blending brushes. You could add as many tones as you wanted and it would just keep building, building, building on the, um, the depth of the color. There you go. I want to see what yours looks like after this. Would you send me a picture? I just think that this is such a fun little project that you could really customize to make however, look however you want. All right, let's talk about um, the products that we used. First of all, I'll show you a couple of them. This one here is the tree dye. You can see it kind of looks like a branch. It also comes with a dandelion and then three words that are cut out. So inspire, uh, adventure, and forever get cut out. And then these are the dyes that we used here for the um, window frame. So you can see it actually cuts it out and gives the texture as you run it through. And then you also have the ability with these ones here to cut out the stamped images. I love that they give you two sets of this so you get twice as many because goodness knows you're going to lose one of those somewhere probably, right? <laughs> and you also get four flower pots, a water jug, and then these cut out the stamped images of the leaves and flowers that go in the coordinating stamp set. Let me put this away and I'll take you through the catalog. So where would you we find all of these products here? So first of all, this is a stamp set called Happy Thoughts, which I suggested could be perfect for putting inside. It's got some great sayings in there and I like that they're paired up. So that would be one that would be really good in your collection. But again, we didn't do any stamping on this project, did we? Um, the window flower box dies are the ones that I talked about. Those ones are also available to go along with the mini. They're perfectly sized for that, meaning that they will fit through the narrower width of the machine. Um, Welcoming window is the stamp set that goes along with it, and it's fantastic with all these beautiful bits and pieces, even a brick pattern that you can create your own customized bricks, and um, even some great sayings for Mother's Day and for general sayings as well. From the annual catalog, we've got our 
which paper did I use here? Oh, our window sheets. Um, they come 12 by 12 and they're great for all kinds of techniques. I just love those window sheets. They're lots of fun and they're perfect for making a window. It's in the name. Then of course we've got our sweet silhouettes dies and that's the one that comes with the dandelion, the branch, the three words and um, that's all for dyes I think that, that I used. Yeah. And then the embossing folder that I use is the brick and mortar 3D from our annual catalog as well. So anything like this, again, it's in the later half of the catalog. So um, you know that as the retired list is released, those are the items that are going to sell out first if they are on that retired list. So I'll stack that up there. And here we go. We're going on our last card. And I promise this one is um, going to be finished in a jiffy here. We are using and showcasing some beautiful designer series paper and we're making a money holder or gift card holder. We've got our saying here, just want to say, that's cut out with white paper and we can customize that to be whatever color that we want. I'm using blends to color mine. And We've got this beautiful acetate, which on one side is gold and on the other side is silver. And when we open this up, we can fit inside, this one here has the card, uh, a gift card, or you could also, you know, fold some cash in half and then just tuck it in there as well. So this kind of a design showcases both sides of the designer series paper, which I think is perfect for a pack like this, which is just stunning, 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 stunning. I'll show you it in just a few minutes here, but let's get started on making this, okay? This is going to be different for everyone. There, there's so many beautiful patterns in this pack. Um, so I tried to show you, you know, three different designs of designer series paper, but there are six total designs, and of course they're double-sided, so you get to see all of the paper. So I want this to be on the outside of my card. I'm going to fold this in like this. There we go. That was a little bit of a tight fold there. I don't know why. Maybe my scoring was just a hair off, but let's just use our bone folder to get that nice crease. And then for this part here, I actually initially used my paper trimmer to cut this off, but last night I thought, well, why couldn't we just fold this down? And we can definitely do that. That's a little bit easier and a little bit less finicky. So fold it down in half so that we can create that little pocket. And then we can put a little bit of adhesive on there, right, to hold that in place. And then to hold this in place here, oops, look at that, I just need to crease it a little bit more. To hold this in place here, I don't want to put any adhesive there, I'm just going to put it along the bottom, okay. In the past we've used things like tear tape, which would work great for an application like this, but I'm using my stamp and seal, number one, because it holds really, really well. Number two, because I forgot my um, tear tape at home, so <laughs> there you go. Now, before we go any further, I gave you a little piece of our basic white cardstock that you can put on the inside here, and that just gives you a place to write. Now, if you have a light color and you feel like you could write a saying and it would still be visible, then by all means, just leave that beautiful designer series paper to shine. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, I just realized this last night after creating my projects, but um, it's not going to be the end of the world if, if you don't do this first, but there's actually some film on your acetate, so you're going to want to peel that off. It appears to be on the silver side. So not the gold side, but the silver side. I don't think the, sil the gold side ha actually has any film on there. So that's interesting. I wonder why they put it on the silver side. Like maybe that's where the printing happens? No, I can feel it on the gold side. I don't know, guys. That's a mystery to me, but um, I put together these other two projects with the film still intact. So if you want to skip this step, you can definitely do that too. So I've got these lined up so we can um, put it straight onto our card and just make an equal border for the the top and the sides, okay? And when we do that, there's enough here 
um, overlap that there's room for a stamp and seal to be hidden. So long story short, just put adhesive on the back of your window sheet and everything's going to be okay. It'll be hidden as long as you stay close to the edge. I mean, oh, it does shine more, you know, it, you know, you guys, it does. Oh, look at this now. I'm peeling this off and it's all coming apart. Okay, if you're having that problem, bring in your heat tool or if you <laughs> don't have a heat tool, a hair dryer. Softens up to a seven. Trigger happy. There we go. I hope I didn't ruin this now. Nothing is ruined. It's always happy accidents, right? If you guys ever have adhesive problems like that though, seriously, just remember that tip that you can heat it up and then you can remove the adhesive and, and change it around. So do you, do you want to put out the um, gold side or the silver side? What are you going to do? If you have a second, you know I'd love to hear about it, whether you guys are gold people or silver people. Again, I'm going to look at my card and make sure it's opening the right way. I'm sure you guys have noticed that this is actually just half of a regular cardstock base because the card part that opens is just this part on the front here. I wanted to showcase a different way of using our designer series paper and a way that actually shows off both sides of the designer series paper because it's just so pretty. There we go. Align that. You can see I put a little bit more stamp and seal on there. Um, the stamp and seal plus would be a great application for that too. If you have some of that handy, it'd be great for, for that. I've got one little piece here that just needs a little bit of a snip because it's going over a little bit too far in the corner there. And now when I turned on my hair dryer, <laughs> I blew some of my pieces everywhere. So let me grab another kit here and I'll get my vellum because goodness knows I won't be able to find it. Here we go. All right, vellum. This is going to go onto our designer series paper. And again, anything vellum is, you can actually see through it. So we want to be aware of where we're putting our adhesive. So we're going to hold off on adhering that for now and we're going to instead focus on our words. Now if you wanted to, you could just leave these as white, right? That would be beautiful too. But let's take a look at customizing them. I've got some Stampin' Blends here and I think I'm going to go with a dark color actually just for maximum uh, impact. And this is the Knight of Navy. Again, bring in my scrap paper. This is starting to sure look like scrap paper, but I'll keep do, using this one here. And I'm just going to kind of apply the dark one in like little brush strokes, swooshes. You could get really involved with this and do like a halo look or um, a shadow kind of look. That would look cool as well. It would look really beautiful. Give you lots of impact. And I'm not worried too much about areas where maybe there's like a, a little bit. Look at this. I'm getting ink on my fingers. This is how I actually like to do it. Anything small like this. There we go. And now I can go in with my light one over top. So are you guys kind of, oh, is this light? Is this dark? This is light, but it's actually darker. Look at that. Just based on how inky it is, it's darker. That's okay. I can work with that. This is almost going to look like denim or something. Here we go. Are you thinking and compiling a list of what you want to order tomorrow, just go onto my website and you can place the order yourself and have it shipped directly to you. You can enter your credit card information just there and then it will ship directly to your house and you will get free shipping with every, well, a minimum $65 order. So that's pretty great. 
because normally if you were to place an order that was 65 like that, it would cost you $9.95 to ship it. $9.95 is the minimum shipping that Stampin' Up! charges. It's coming from the States. There's a lot of heavy products, right? So if you think about it, it's, you know, they're, they're packing a lot. But, um, you know, it's, it's just so nice to get free shipping. Such, it feels like such a treat sometimes. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my color lifter. And I'm just going to go over the top to just kind of blend some of these colors together so it's not so um, rough. And the color lifter is just incredible. It's a magic little paintbrush tool. So it is almost like a bit of an eraser. So if you go over the lines, like if you're coloring in a lined image, you can actually kind of blend away. It, it doesn't totally erase it. You might have still a halo, but it definitely can cover up if you, you know, make a mistake um, like that. If you wanted to color within the lines, if you didn't. So I'm just using this to blend the lines together. Or blend the little scribbles together that I did there. Just want to say, so cute. And I cut these out from our card last month. So I already put the adhesive sheets on the back there. So getting them going sometimes is the hardest part here. You can get a little bit going here. You can use your take your pick tool. I don't have my fancy nails anymore. I've got um, low key nails <laughs> ever since COVID. It's a year now. I sure miss my other nails, but um, it's really handy for taking apart stuff like this. My advice to you is take it up um, very high to the corner because this is a lot of words for this size of medallion. Oh boy. Come on, darling. I want to see this beautiful blue on the card. So I'm going to keep picking away at these little stickers. It sure is easier than using any um, fine tip glue pen or something like that, especially when you're cranking things through the big boss. Just want to say. So I thought I was so clever last month, you guys, in uh, using the negative image for this and then cutting out the words to use in another time. What I did not think about was sorting 48 sets of just want to say when the letters, uh, sorry, when the words are in a big pile. <laughs> so I actually ended up having like kind of a, a check-in talk with Dale, who's the head of Stampin' Up! Canada. So checking in and seeing how people are doing and then also kind of brainstorming for um, some ideas that are coming up and, you know, what what would work. And, and also I think he was kind of rallying people for jobs as well. So anyways, I was on the phone call with him and I told him what I was doing, sorting out 48 sets of just want to say, and he thought that I was insane. And I thought I was insane too. But we do these things, don't we? We get into them and we're like, oh, maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> so now I'm going to glue this onto my card here. Oh, I just love the way that turned out. And I'm going to use some mini dimensionals that I'm going to cut in half. And I use my take your pick tool and I'm going to hide them in like little strategic intersections of the letters that happen to be a little bit bigger. Because again, we will see any adhesive through this vellum. But I had to use the vellum so that we could see this beautiful paper that was behind and we didn't have to cover it up. So this paper, did you see the video that I shared on my page of the artist actually creating this? She makes it look, I know it's, um, it's like a fast forward video, but still, she creates this beautiful paper in this pack here in such an easy, efficient way. She's not second guessing anything. She's just applying the beautiful colors of paint straight onto the canvas. No second guessing, just put it on there and with a palette knife, just like 
kind of scratching it on. Gorgeous, like totally gorgeous. But um, yeah, I, I just love that with Stampin' Up! we can have access to a beautiful piece of, like a, it's a work of art, right? And um, we can have access to that to cut up and to stick on our own cards and then to be artistic with ourselves. So pretty beautiful, pretty amazing. Like we've had works of art that look like Monet painted them, like the water lilies last year, right? And, and that was just somebody had Stampin' Up! painting them. Like amazing, right? Okay, I just had to pull out from another project here these cute little gilded gems because... I blew mine onto the floor, I think, with my hair dryer. Never a dull moment over here, guys. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to pick those up and to place them exactly where I want them. These gilded gems are so pretty and they really add a lot of shimmer and shine to your project. So that coupled with the acetate paper, that window sheet paper with the design on it, I just think is pretty spectacular. So ta-da, there's your finished card, your last card. Let me show you what we use, and this is gonna blow your mind, you guys. So we've got our gorgeous designer series paper. And um, this is one pack that I have unopened. And I'll show you some of the designs here. This one's my favorite one, because it includes, um, uh, what's it called? Pretty Peacock in it, and um, you can see like that's the coordinating color there. That's an in color that's leaving us, you guys. Okay, and then the back sides are all like these super textured looking um, paint applications. Can you guys see that there? Isn't that incredible? So one side is all flowers. One side is all um, kind of textural paintings. And some of these are really fun. Like, you know, this is one of the ones I think that she painted on the video and it's just incredible to see her just laying down the color and the even the background here my lights being weird there we go um, even the background you can see there's like a lot of texture there as well and then the back side of the paper but I wanted to show you because there's a couple of sheets here that are quite special oh we also have our our acetate whoops maybe a sneak peek there Oh, here we go. This is a sheet of paper here, um, which has a beautiful background there as well. But we also have some of this acetate. It comes in three different designs. So one design looks like this. And again, one side is gold and one side is silver. So you can reverse it depending on what you want your project to look like. And then another one of the designs looks like this one. So again, beautiful flowers and we've got the gold and the silver. But take a look at this, you guys. So we've got our beautiful paper and then look at that. It actually lines up and outlines the designer series paper underneath. So it has that beautiful gold outline over top with the acetate sheet. So this design of the design series paper does not have that ability with one of the um, pattern papers in the pack, but two, the other two designs of acetate do coordinate perfectly with our designer series paper to create this gorgeous overlay. So that's one. And then look at this one here. Okay, so bringing in, sorry, it's sticking, there we go. Bringing in designer series paper, right? Looks gorgeous on its own, its own. And then take a look at this. Wow, right? Amazing. Just a total wow on your project. So if you wanted silver, I'm sorry, you can't do that because it reverses the image, but it gives a beautiful gold overlay. This would be beautiful on its own too, right? You could just use that. But these two together, like just makes my brain explode with beautifulness. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the products that we used here on that last card. And I'll take you through the annual catalog first. 
So again, I use the Simply Scoring tool to score the three, you know, folds in. Um, you could use your paper trimmer as well. I use the vellum cardstock from page whatever, 153. So that's where we had the Fluid 100, that's where we had the vellum cardstock. We even have our 12 by 12 cardstock that we used on the previous card on this page. So this is kind of a magic page for all things cardstock. Then over here we've got our Gilded Gems on page 157. And we used our adhesive sheets again. That's on our adhesive page, so page 162, and it's number one. You definitely want that, again, not just for people who own the die-cutting machine. Then for the shape of this vellum, I actually used Hippo and Friends. This is a really fun set. It, of course, cuts out the adorable little hippo unicorn and lamb so hippo unicorn lamb but it also has these great shapes that give stitching dots and an impressed line as well when you cut them now from our mini catalog we've got our gorgeous suite here the fine art floral and that's where we have our designer series paper and our coordinating acetate that goes along with it as well the dies for just want to say cutting out is from that same suite in that die pack there that die pack cuts out the flowers as well as it has two rectangles that fit all of the different sayings in that stamp set which is really versatile as well so i think that this is a really good set to get okay let's see here uh, da, 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 da. Hey! <laughs> Thank you guys so much for stamping with me. If you made it all the way through, congratulations. That was a lot of projects. And I can't wait to hear from you tomorrow and um, hopefully get you some free shipping. That would be amazing. And, um, and then also, um, if you wanted, if you didn't already have the card supplies, that I have prepped, I do have some extra sets. So you can definitely contact me, place your order online and I will mail you some or you can pick up from my house and you can get the extra ones as well, the bonus ones. So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight and um, I hope to stamp with you soon. Please, if you can, post below, um, this will be posted afterwards for replay forever, but post a picture of your projects, comment along, let me know if you're watching the replay or if you were watching live, tell me if you like silver or gold, and please let's keep the communication lines open because it is so wonderful to connect with you still. Uh, we've been doing this for a year now, exclusively online. Isn't it crazy to think? One year ago, um, I had all those chairs set up in my stamping studio and I was getting to see your lovely faces in person and now we get to do this which you know what also has its advantages too right I think we're reaching more people than ever I'm shipping um, or mailing cards uh, all over Canada I'm in four different provinces now so people are crafting with me from all over Canada and it's so exciting to be able to connect and share what we love regardless of our ge geography right so um thank you guys so much for sharing this video with your friends inviting them to craft along with us because i think the more that we can connect the better off we will be you know um as soon as these vaccines all roll out and maybe we get back to normal right but don't worry guys i love doing these online as well and connecting with people all over alberta and all over canada and so I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon online. So thank you guys again for joining me. So appreciate stamping together. And uh, hope we can stamp again very, very soon.